bringing the Bible up to date, we'll begin in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. There is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. And we're looking at verses 12, 13, 14. There is a generation, we are in a generation, that matches this. And this was written about anywhere between 686 to 700 B.C. And it's a shame that we have adolescent children today. And they badmouth their fathers. And the blessed, they don't care or honor or desire or wish their parents or their mother to be happy. They don't care. We are in the me generation. It's all about me. And on the other hand, too, we've got parents, fathers, and mothers who don't care about their children. We've got a generation of people growing up today in this generation. I don't care about you. Verse 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Oh, we're doing right. We want to fund the police because we believe it's right. Everything we do, though it harms others, abuses others, we're right. We're important. We're not breaking no laws, though they're lawbreakers. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. They're not cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They may run to their priests, their rabbi, whoever, their gods, water, soap, but they're not cleansed of their filthiness. They may use sanitizer, but they're not clean of their filthiness. They're wicked and vile before God. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. Pride. Pride in government. Pride in the population. Pride in the churches. Jesus spoke about one man. He knelt down. He wouldn't even look up. He smoked his breast. He said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. The other guy. I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I don't do this. I do this. I do that. I don't do this. I don't do that. Pride is a sin. And I've seen many kinds of pride in the church house. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords. And their jaw teeth as knives. They hurt with their mouth. They destroy with their mouth. To devour the poor off the earth. And the needy from among men. The words they have. The words that they do. And they don't need a gun. They don't need a sword. Their mouth. Has done destruction. You know. A, a husband or wife. Can be abused. And never having a hand laid on them. They can be verbally abused. Verbal abuse. Is just as harmful. As physical abuse. And what are generations that we see in Proverbs 30. But we're not done. We'll take account written in 62 about AD. As we go to 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. Paul. And Paul this would be Paul's Proverbs 30. This know also, know this, Christian. He's written, writing to an evangelist, a man in the ministry, written to Christians. Know this also, that in the last days, we're in the last days, perilous times shall come. And we're going to see a longer list in Proverbs 30, but we're going to see the people, the generation 
of the Proverbs 30. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, ego, me, myself, and I. Biggest thing today is the BLM, Black Lives Matter. What about other races? Covetous. They want things they can't have. They want things that they don't want to work for. They think they get it, deserve it, and give it to them right away. Covetous is a sin. Boasters. They're proud and they speak great of what they do. And that's the Christian church too. That's the bad. We have such a great church. We have such a great pastor. We're rich. God says, you're poor, miserable, naked. There's proud. Pride is a sin. I don't know how many times I've heard about, I'm so proud of my church. I'm so proud of my son. I'm proud of my daughter. It's a sin. God says, well done. Blasphemers, taking the Lord's name in vain, taking the Bible, the Word of God in vain, taking God in vain, disobedient to parents, we saw that in Proverbs 30, we've seen this all in Proverbs 30, they don't listen to their parents, they have no honor of the elderly or the aged. In my workplaces, when I have been put in charge of teenagers, I've had to tell those teenagers, you are ought to respect me because I am older than you. And even then, they don't give a flip. They don't care. They don't care about the police. They don't care about the teachers. They don't care about the government. They don't care anything about but themselves. We are in those days. Unthankful. The time of the year we have given thanks to God. We got to hurry up and go buy stuff we can't afford. We got to have a Black Friday. We got all kinds of toys and gimmicks and, and material goods. We got all kinds of, of wealth of things. But we're unthankful. Because look, look above that word, covetous. Unthankful, but still covetous. Unholy. Man, that's describe this generation in one word unholy. Anything but holiness. With now natural affliction, there are women who are pregnant going to, to an organization that is funded, that is running, that advertises, will kill your baby. And there are men and women who will step outside the marriage bed. For adulterous affair. Hey, it's played out in the movies. It's played out in the screen. It's played out on the television sets. I'll care more for my sports than I will for my family. I will give more to my career than I will for my children. I will give more to the materialism and very much nothing back to God. Truth breakers. They sign contracts. They go bankrupt. They say they're going to do something and they don't. Our government all over the world have broken treaties. The United Nations who are telling us we're to fear global warming, we're to fear you know, the environmental changes. You can't even keep your own truth. And your peace treaties. Don't tell me about global economics. Don't tell me about global environment. Let's talk about what you guys can't do. False accusers. Liars. Liars are in this day and age. Incontinent. Just 
unable to perform. Unable to do what God has given to the male and to the female. The male don't want to be men. And the females don't want to be females. The men want to go for the, the gusto and the fame and the riches and the, and the entertainment and the female. They want to go out and work. You got women today don't even know what to do in the kitchen. For many people in the world today, if all the restaurants shut down tomorrow, they start to go. Fear. my day and age I've, I've heard in the news women been held captive in men's basements in rooms tied up raped tortured children are being stolen off the streets in sex crimes you don't know today if you just go go get a tank of gas or run in and get a cup of coffee and somebody's gonna pull a gun out you don't know if you're gonna be walking down the sidewalk and someone's gonna take their car and drive down the sidewalk and just start running people over despisers of those that are good calling good evil and evil good For a man who tries to raise his family correctly, and try to follow the Bible, try to serve God, and is a law-abiding citizen, and wants to do good, he's despised and rejected, like Jesus was. A man that's faithful to the job, shows up on time at work, is loyal to the company, and does what he's supposed to, and pr promotions go to people who don't deserve the promotion. Jobs are handed out because women have breasts or skin color. We're supposed to be an equal opportunity country, then why do they ask questions about race, color? Those that are good don't get the jobs. And those that don't want the jobs, get the jobs. And then don't do good at the job. Traitors. They sell out. There are men that sell their family out. There are wives and mothers who sell out their families. When I was in Connecticut, where I used to live, I never went to the casinos. I listened to the story. I've, I've been told that there'd be no reason for them to lie. I've been told that at the slot machines, there'd be grandmother age women sitting there and taking their inheritance for their children, taking the money for their grandchildren, take the money for their grandchildren and their great grandchildren, spending it on the one arm bar bandit. That's a traitor to the family. There used to be a time that it'd be grandma and grandpa, mom and dad and the children under the same house, everybody helping everybody in unity. Heady. Head. Big head. No heart. Head's not in the Bible. The heart. You gotta go to a head shrinker because your life is all messed up. You gotta pop pills into your mouth because your life is just ruined. Rather come to God and deal with God with an heart issue, with a sin issue. There are people who are heady because of race. There are people heady because of riches. There are people heady because of political campaign. They got their head in the clouds. High minded. They got their minds and ideas too far away. It's not here and now.
You know, that, that teenager just graduated from school and he's dating and he wants to get that sports car. And the dad's got to take him on. Son, you're dating this woman. You want to marry her. And you want to get a two-seater sports car. Where are you going to put the children? They want to go into an employment and they want to, they want all the benefits. They want all the vacation time. They want all the all of the upper management. The first afternoon they come to work. Lovers of pleasures. More than the lovers of God. Every even the churches today are pleasure. BBS, let's entertain the kiddies. Let's decorate the churches for the kiddies. Let's not give them hellfire damnation preaching. Let's give them candy. Let's give them swing sets. Let's give them arts and crafts. But five minutes Bible. Let's have a movie night. Let's have a bowling night. Let's have a bingo night. Let's bring a big screen television to the church Sunday night and we'll watch Super Bowl. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Not just fighting the church will come Sunday morning. What'd you do for God this week? I came to church Sunday morning. Is it not enough? Having a form of godliness. They act holy, but they're full of baloney. They're hypocrites. You realize most of the people you see Sunday morning in church, most, I didn't say all, you check out their life Sunday afternoon, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They're not as holy as they put themselves to be Sunday morning. There are deceivers in the church. Having you to think, oh, they must be great. Look how wonderful they are. And then denying the power thereof. How'd you get where you got today? Oh, my college. The doctor. A lawsuit. What about God? Well, what about him? Paul says, from such, turn away. Paul said, don't even have fellowship with these people. And yet they fill the churches. All are welcome. All these people are welcome. Because they'll fill the plate. Paul says the division. For of this sort, these type of people, they creep, they're creeps, into houses. And lead captives, silly women. Silly women. That would be women who are supposed to know godliness, not being silly. Where's the knowledge of the holy? There's no fear of the Lord. Led away with divers, all kinds of different lust. Lust. It's not the Christian life. We're not to have lust. We ought to have holiness. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly, foolishness, shall be manifest unto all men, as there also was. I accidentally read verse 7. Ever learning, college education, university, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What's the truth? You ain't going to get it on the news. You ain't going to hear your Republican hear the truth. You ain't going to get your Democrat to preach the truth. You're not even going to get some church pulpits to preach the truth. They're going to lie to you. Satan's a liar. The only form you're going to get the truth is when you study and read your Bible. 
King James 1611 Bible only. No others will do. Listen, if you think all Baptist churches got the truth, you've been deceived. You think the media has all the truth, you've been deceived. You think your politicians giving you the truth, you've been deceived. You've been truly deceived. We're looking at pride and arrogance. Murder and killing and violence. That's today. It's the fruit of education taking God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ out of the schools and replacing it with evolution. What you see being played out in America and in the news today, why is there so much violence? That's what evolution teaches. The survival of the fittest. The bigger, strong, the biggest, strongest monkey in the banana tree keeps all the bananas. While he kills the other monkeys. Pride. Run back to Proverbs. Proverbs. It's in the churches. Pride is in the churches. 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And the world loves evil. The world sells evil. Movies, books. Even Christians fall for the evil. their movies and their books. Pride. You're to hate pride, not have pride. I'm proud to be American. I am truly a Baptist. No other way to have it. Pride, sin. Get down, confess your sin. He's able and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent of that pride. That pride would be wood, hay, or stubble. And arrogancy. You know, let's look who I am. Look who I am. Why ain't you bowing down and kissing my feet? And the evil way. Not only hate evil, but the evil way. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. You ain't going to find an evil way following Jesus. And there are churches following the evil way. It's not of Jesus. And the forward, the perverse, the wicked mouth. Do I hate. Cussing. Foul mouth. Bragging about sin. Eleven. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride cometh, America, then cometh shame. America's going to have shame. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Rightly divine. Get rid of that pride. Because you're going to get shamed. That's in the Bible, King James 1611. When pride cometh, then come is shame, America. And you're going to reap more than you sow. That's the laws of reaping and sowing. Chapter 13. 1310. Only, only by pride cometh contention. Contention. Let's look up the word contention. We'll bring it up 18. Webster's 1828 Dictionary, I don't do the Greek. Strife, struggle, violent of effort to attain something. That's what's going on in the streets of America. Contention, fights, gun, shooting. Defund the police. 
Black Lives Matter. Go out and protest. Grab a sign and protest. To resist a person, claim or injury, contest, quarrel. That's what's going on today in the streets of America because of pride. Pride is already doing her work in the streets of America. You're not going to have no revival in America when pride is running strong. There's going to be no outbreak of the Holy Spirit when the churches have got pride. 16.18 Proverbs 16.18 Pride goeth before his destruction. Pastor, Christians, church. The haughty spirit before a fall. Pride will bring shame and destruction. Pride will never bring gold, silver, precious stone. Proverbs 30. Look at Proverbs 30, verse 14. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords, their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Galatians. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 15. Look at verse 14. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. There's no love in Proverbs 30. There's no love in 2 Timothy 3, except for the love of self. That's one of the things. Lovers of the self. But with Proverbs 30, verse uh, 13. But if you bite and devour one another, gossip, lie, clicks, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Biting, devouring, consuming goes on in the churches. Goes on amongst Christians. James. James chapter 3, verse 9. James 3, 9. Therefore, bless we God, even the Father. Wherewith curse we men, they curse their fathers, remember? Which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth that the same place sweet water and bitter? It's sad. It's sad. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto man. Religion. Science. Education. Politics. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That's Proverbs 30. That's 2 Timothy 3. That's this generation. The generation that rejects God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ. Whatever they stand, whatever they are for, whatever their motives are. 
if it's not Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the ends thereof will be death. For the wages of sin is death. Unto death happens, there will be violence and more violence. What an evil and wicked generation we live in. And it's only going to get worse. Because after the church is gone, there's coming a worldwide ruler. Who is wicked himself. 